Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Achia and today we are going to be doing my March book haul. God be with us because there is a lot. There are so many books that I have decided that this would be a two-part video. <laughs> so this first part will be novels and books, things of that variety, and part two which will be coming out very very soon after this video if not the same time as this video will be all the comic books and graphic novels that I acquired during this month and because we have a super long list let's get down to business. So if you watched my bargain book haul which you should have you know that part of this book haul is or part of all the books that I got during the month of March is going to be eight books that I got from thrift books and book outlet they exist. I'm not going to talk about them, but you should know that they are included. What you should do is after you watch this video, if you haven't watched my bargain book haul, you should go do that. I'll put in a little cardy thingy below as well as in the description box. Moving along. Also, if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm a senior in college and I'm doing a senior project, which means I have to write a paper, which means I have to read books. Yay. So four books that I <laughs> asked my mom to buy. Thank you, mother really thank you um i will start with those first and then we will just keep plowing through so the first book that was part of that four book thing for my senior project is eloquent rage by um eloquent rage a black feminist discovers her superpower by Brittany cooper this came out this year which i've been like really good at buying books that i'm interested in when they come out instead of like six months later and so what this says so what if it's true that black women are mad as hell? They have a right to be. In the black feminist tradition of Audre Lorde, Brittany Cooper reminds us that anger is a powerful source of energy that can give us the strength to keep on fight fighting. Yet too often black women's anger has been caricatured into an ugly and destructive force that threatens the civility and social fabric of American democracy. But Cooper shows us that there is more to the story than that. Black women's eloquent rage is what makes Serena Williams such a powerful tennis player. It's what makes Beyonce's girl power anthems resonate so hard. It's what makes Michelle Obama an icon. Eloquent rage keeps us all honest and accountable. It reminds women that they don't have to settle for less. And then of course, there's more. So of course, when I read that description, I was like, I'm very much interested in this. And so I added to my list and I think and I really do hope that it will provide a lot of like information and fodder for my senior project research paper. Next we have How We Get Free, Black Feminism and the Kambihi River Collective, edited by Kianga Yamahacha Taylor, hope I pronounced that correctly. And basically what it says is the Kambahi River Collector Collective, a trailblazing group of radical black feminists, was one of the most important organizations to develop out of the anti-racist and women's liberation movements of the 1960s and 70s. In this collection of interviews edited by activist scholar Kianga Yamahata Taylor, founding members of the organization and contemporary activists reflect on the legacy of its contributions to black feminism and its impact on today's struggles. So yeah, also isn't this just like a super cute book? I don't think this will take me super long to read. Um, I'm also, it's interviews as well, so that's pretty cool as well. And yeah, I'm really excited to get through this book. Next we have This Will Be My Undoing by Morgan Jerkins. As you can clearly see, I've already finished the book. And if you want to know what I have to say, stay tuned for my March wrap up, which will either be out before or after this video, who really knows. Um, and this is basically a memoir slash collection of es essays by Morgan Jerkins, and they're essentially just weave or wove, wove and weave together, woven. She weaves them together and an intricate and almost perfect manner. So I was super excited about this, and I go more in depth in my March wrap up about my thoughts on this book. Next we have Intersectionality by Patricia Hill Collins and Surma Bilge. Bilge? Hmm. So um, if you read, what am I saying? My March, what am I saying? My April TBR has another book by Patricia Hill Collins, Black Feminist Thought in it. And this is another book called Intersectionality. And I feel like that's pretty much explanatory. It's going to like deconstruct and 
explore the idea of intersectionality within feminism and civil rights movements or social justice movements and how it's kind of come into a modern context. So those are the four books that I am reading for my senior project. That's kind of how I've categorized them. Now we are going to move on to pleasure readings. So I went to Barnes and Nobles the other day looking for Stephen King books. Looking for two specifically, they weren't on the shelves and so I really wanted to get two Stephen King books because I'm trying to expand my reading. That's like my goal for all of 2018 and I guess like the rest of my life but I do want to dive into his works. I tried reading Carrie a couple years ago and I just was like mm. but I heard it's like it's his first book so I've heard it's not the best one so I decided to kind of dibble dabble and so the two books that I picked up by Stephen King are Mr. Mercedes, which was fairly recent and it's part of a series, so hopefully I like it, and then Joyland. So I'm gonna start with Stephen King, or Stephen King, I wanna start with Mr. Mercedes first. The stolen Mercedes emerges from the pre-dawn fog and plows through a crowd of men and women online for a job fair in a distressed American city. Then the lone driver backs up, charges again, and speeds off leaving eight dead and more wounded. The case goes unsolved and retired detective Bill Hodges is out of hope when he gets a letter from a man who loved the feel of death under the Mercedes wheels. Brady Hartsfield wants that rush again, but this time he's going big with an attack that would take down thousands. Unless Hodges and two unusual allies he picks up along the way can throw a wrench in Hartsfield's diabolical plans. I've always been intimidated of this book simply because I always see it in hardcover and it's huge in hardcover. So when I saw it in a much more like, you know, digestible format, this is paperback, it's smaller, it's like a weird length, it's like the size of my head a little bit. Um, I was like, you know what, I'll give it a try and it's also not super huge, which means that I can carry it with me places because paperbacks are heavy and his paperbacks are gigantic for like no reason. Next one is Joyland. So this says, this is like a shorter one, this says, College student Devin Jones took the summer job at Joyland hoping to forget the girl who broke his heart, but he wound up facing something far more terrible. The legacy of a vicious murder, the fate of a dying child, and dark truths about life and what comes after that would change his world forever. A riveting story about love and loss, about growing up and growing old, and about those who don't get to do either because death comes for them before their, their time. So... Yeah, this is, um, I'm excited for this. I'm excited to just like read me some Stephen King and hopefully I like it. I have a feeling I will. This one especially is a type of mystery that I would read. Also on that trip to Barnes and Nobles because I say I'm gonna get one thing from Barnes and Nobles and I end up getting four. Um, we have The Quiche and the Dead. I recently, I think it was like, I forget who I recently like started, I recently started watching on YouTube. I will like put their name someplace but they did a whole video on cozy mysteries and that subgenre of mystery for March Mystery Madness and I just happened to pass like this huge section of books that fit into the cozy mystery subgenre and I was like let me get one because I'm curious and I have a feeling that I will really enjoy it. So this is The Quiche and the Dead by Kirsten Weiss. Let me read you this back cover because it's so punny. <laughs> Oh man, only her own business seemed like pie in the sky to Valentine Harris when she moved to the coastal California town of San Nicolas, expecting to start a new life with her fiance. Five months and a broken engagement later, her at least her dreams of opening a pie shop has become a reality. But when one of her regular regulars keels over at the counter while eating a quiche, Val feels like she's living a nightmare. After the police disup dis after the police determine the customer was poisoned, business at Pie Town drops faster than a fallen crust. Convinced they're both suspects, Val's flaky, 70-something pie crust maker, Charlene, drags her boss into some amateur sleuthing. At first, Val dismisses Charlene's half-baked hypotheses, but before long, the ladies uncover some shady dealings hidden in fog-bound San Nicholas. Now, Val must expose the truth before a crummy killer tries to shut her pie hole. Yeah, so seven puns. I think it's just gonna be a cute, like, fun read, and I'm super excited about it. And I have a feeling this will be a new subgenre that's like my guilty pleasure. <laughs> Next, we have One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. I've never read this book. I've heard great things about it. I've heard bad things about it. So I read the blurb and I was like, you know what? We're going to give this a shot because it's one of those classic books that everyone should read. And yeah, and it's also like I really just enjoy that cover. 
And I feel like this is like a new thing with books. Like they're this weird height because even Mr. Mercedes is like this height. So it's like they couldn't decide if they want to be one high or the other so they went with the middle one. But yeah, it's a classic novel, 1960s. Brawling, fun-loving rebel who swaggers into the world of a mental hospital and takes over. We all see what happens. Next we have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. As you probably know, the movie is out now. And so I will hopefully be reading this over spring break so that I can go see the movie. I'm super excited about it. I've heard great things about it. Um, and so the back reads, 16 year old and not so openly gay Simon Spire prefers to save his drama for the school musical. But when an email falls into the wrong hands, his secret is at risk of being thrust into the spotlight. Now Simon is actually being blackmailed. If he doesn't play wingman for class clown Martin, his sexual identity will become everyone's business. Worse, the privacy of Blue, the pen name of the boy he's been emailing with, will be jeopardized. As his email correspondence with Blue grows more flirtatious every day, Simon's junior year has suddenly gotten all kinds of complicated. Simon has to find a way to step out of his comfort zone before he's pushed out. Without alienating his friends, compromising himself, or fumbling a shot at happiness with the most confusing, adorable guy he's never met. I think it's gonna be a great coming of age story. Representation is so important. So I'm excited for this. I've heard great things so I have no doubts that I'll really enjoy this book. Next we have Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. I've also heard great things about this book. The fourth book in the series, Restore, series, Restore Me I believe, just came out and this is the first book in the series and it's about this girl who has um, a power. Her touch is fatal but the reestablishment has plans for her. her plans to use her as a weapon, but Juliet, of course, has plans of her own. After a lifetime without freedom, she's finally discovering a strength to fight back for the very first time, and to find a future with the one boy she's thought she's lost forever. So I'm excited. I keep, I feel like when I keep hearing stuff, or like keep hearing like a book so good, a book so good, especially since this is young adult fantasy at this point, I'm like, why not? Also, the cover is absolutely beautiful. Last book in part one of this video is going to be Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Edayami and this is based in West African um, culture and basically we have Zeli who lives in this universe or this world where magic was super abundant and there was a group of people who practiced magic in different forms. A monarchy then took over and decided that magic was a no-no. Magic disappeared from the land and now they hunt people who practice magic and her mother was- this is on the back left- her mother was one of the people who was killed because of this. So now she teams up with a rogue princess and I think someone else. Yeah, a rogue princess and they must outwit wit to the crown prince whose goal is to eradicate all magic practicing people. I talk about this more in my April TBR and then I will definitely talk about it more in my April wrap up because I am planning to read this book in the month of April. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, this is only part one. I will be recording and releasing a part two where I go over the graphic novels and comic books that I purchased during the month of March. If you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and make sure you comment down below. What are some books that you bought in the month of March? What are some books that you are planning to buy in April? Make sure you check out all of my social media, which I will also link down below and check out my last video, which will be linked all over the place. And I will see you next time in my next video. Bye.